I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome once again to Rama Praise. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. Honey, today you are talking about praise God for the harvest. You know, yes, our harvest will come in due time. In fact, it talks about if you keep believing God, the harvest will come in due time. Yes. You know, uh, some people, you just don't go out and plant and then the next day reap a harvest. No. Well, some people, they, they, they pray one day and, and say, okay, thank you, Lord, for this and believe in God for it. And they go out the next day to get it. Well, Expect hey, it to sometimes uh, there is a period of time between when you plant the seed and receive the harvest. And it's the same way with believing God. You have to continually say out of your mouth, you know, make the confession of faith. That's right. And, and, and thank God, thank God for the harvest even before you see it. And then after you receive it, then you need to con continually thank him for what for he it. has done for it. You know, so, honey, I was thinking about, you're talking about a harvest in the natural. Yeah. I was thinking about, you know, planting corn because yeah. I like corn. And, you know, while that is growing, I would think, oh, I'll be so glad when that corn is harvested so we can eat it. Yeah. Well, the same thing in the spirit. We need to continue to praise God. Thank you, Father, for whatever you're believing for is coming to pass. That's right. So let's go right now where I'm talking to God about praise God for the harvest. I'm glad to see that you're in such a great frame of praising God today because that's what I'm going to talk about. Praise God for the harvest. Things change from one season to another in our, in our weather, in our lives. We go from different seasons. We go from being a, a kid to a teenager, then to an adolescent, and then, then to single, then married then kids, I mean, life, it changes with different seasons. And then all the kids are gone, you got an empty nest, and then the grandkids start coming. How many know what I'm talking about? It, it, it's, it's just seasons of our lives. And you know, the harvest time is a great time of rejoicing when it's, if you live in the farmland country. Because a lot of hard work has gone into preparing the ground and then planting and then taking care of the, uh, of the, of the crops as they begin to grow up out of the ground. And uh, I know down home, down Texas with my grandpa, I don't know what they do now. This was back when I was five years old, six years old. Uh, but down there, we had that black land, north central Texas, and uh, that cotton would start to grow. And you got to go out there with your hoe and take care of the Johnson grass. Because anybody know what Johnson grass is? If you're down there in Texas, it does. It has to take over. And you had to, you had to hoe it, you know, go down each row and make sure you didn't, it took Johnson grass out, but not the plant. Because it was trying to choke the plants out. But then that thing would grow, and then, and then that, uh, that bulb would come on that, on that cotton plant, and then it would start to open up till it was full open, and see that cotton, pick it out of there. Harvest time was a that was a good time because that meant uh, harvest time meant money in your pocket. All the other you just you just working toward that, but man, when you when you get that take that cotton and take it to the gin. You know, that's when it was. You know, I don't know what they do now. They got machines and everything, but you just have to hand pick it, you know, and, and you weighed it. You, you would weigh it. You bring your sack in and you'd weigh it and they'd dump it in the trailer and they'd keep a count of it. Paul pa Paul used to keep a count of it. And when he got to a certain poundage, he knew that was a bale and he'd take it to the gin. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, some of you do, some of you don't. The, Lord, the Bible said, let him as ignorant be ignorant still. 
I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Come on. Somebody, somebody says, oh, that preacher. No, hey, it's all right. To, we we got to have a laugh every once in a while. In fact, the Bible said laughter does good like a medicine. All right. But uh, turn to Genesis 26. Genesis 26. You know, harvest time was a celebration time. You know, and, and, and our harvest time. We praise God for our harvest. Genesis 26, 12. Then Isaac sowed into the land. Now, many people talk about this as, as money, but that, that, this says he sowed into the land. That means he planted a crop. All right? And he reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Now, I know here it says he reaped a hundredfold. Uh, I, I don't know what they do now, but used to, they, if, you, if you got overabundance, they called it a, a bumper crop. It was all, actually, it was over the abundance of what you should have, what should have, have received. That's what happened here. Isaac sowed his, he sowed his seed in the middle of a famine. And God blessed the crops. And he received more than, than, uh, than he should have. I know I was uh, preaching years and years ago, uh, back in the 70s, over in, uh, in, uh, in Kenya. And uh, I, I, I talked about believing God and so forth and so on. And I went back and uh, this, this fellow showed me, I'd seen his house before. And he said, look at my house. And I looked at it and and uh, I said, well, what's the difference? He said, I got a tin roof now instead of a thatch roof. And he said, it was, we had a drought and nobody else's sugar cane was growing. But I, I prayed like you talked about, planted my seed, did my work. And he said, I, it would rain on my piece of ground and not rain on anybody else's. And I'm the only one that had sugar cane. I had a bumper crop. And so, therefore, I'm the only one that's got sugar cane to sell. So he was able to, to uh, harvest, and it blessed him in the natural. By, by applying spiritual principles, he harvested in the natural. But we can harvest in the spiritual also. You see... In the natural and the spiritual, there are seasons that we go through. There are seasons that in our Christian journey that we plant the Word of God into our lives. And then as we sow that seed into our lives, then we reap the harvest of what's sown. Many people wonder why they're not reaping any spiritual benefits well, how much, how much of the Word of God are you putting in? How much seed from the Word are you putting in? Come on now. See, the principle of sowing and reaping is a God principle. It works in the natural and it works in the spiritual. You know, life is based upon this principle. We sometimes don't call it as we, 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 we tell our kids sometimes what you put in is what you're going to get out. If you put the work in, you're going to reap the benefits. You know, if you're athletically, if you don't, if you don't put the time in in practice, you're not going to reap any victories on the, on the field. If you want to, if you want to have good grades, you got to put the time in studying. That's that's sowing. But the reaping comes whenever you get to the end of those four years of high school, and you've got a really good grade point average, and you get a scholarship of certain amount of money because uh, you put the time in. Now you're reaping the benefit. Come on. Anybody understand where I'm going with this today? See, we need to thank God that we have sown the seed 
and then begin to praise him for the harvest. You know, Genesis 8, 22 says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Here, God is saying, as long as the earth remains, you're going to have you're going to have seed time and harvest. It's going to be cold and it's going to be hot, and you're going to have day and night. <clears throat> they shall not see it, cease. In the natural, we all know when we're in one season, we all know what's coming next. You know. In the natural, winter won't forget to come. But neither will come a few months from now, neither will spring forget to come. And a few months after that, neither will summer forget to come. And then another few months goes by, and we have to follow the year. And then we're back to winter again. It's the cycle. Do you realize that as we live our life with God, we go through the through cycles. We go through the cycle of sowing, right? And then we go through the through the through the cycle of letting it grow, the word grow inside of us. And then the harvest comes. See, there's the time of planting, but then there's the time of taking care and waiting for harvest time. You don't plant today and harvest tomorrow. And I don't know why some people can't get the idea that you have to Realize that you plant the word, you speak the word, you plant, and then you reap a harvest. See, the promises of God will come to pass. How many of you know where the sun comes up? What, 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 what direction does the sun come up? The east. Will it come up in the west tomorrow? Why? Because that's the cycle. Has a cycle, right? Actually, if you remember here, when Romy was here teaching us, the, 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 our guide that we had in Israel that was the, the uh, he was all, he's a Messianic Jew, and, but he's, and he began to teach us, actually, when you look at the Bible, begin to, and it, it, it's circular, that's the way the Eastern look at it. How many of you, how many of you remember who was that? Did that open your eyes to something? Then as you begin to read the Bible, you begin to see this. But now wait a minute. We see this in our, in our own society. Stuff that was clothes and different things that was popular in a different season, uh, you wait a few years, they come back around. Maybe just to, see, they, they come back around with these, they call them skinny jeans. <laughs> I got any, any people here that graduated from high school in the mid-50s, like 58, 55, 56, any of y'all people here? Any, any guys here? We had something, they called them stovepipe pants. How many remember that? They were same thing as the skinny jeans, just a little, I mean, you know, we call them stovepipe pants. And if we wait long enough, the bell bottoms will come back in. <laughs> and if we wait long enough, polyester will be back. <laughs> and laser suits. <laughs> and you know what? I've noticed that ties are starting to make a reappearance. Anybody notice that? Huh? Yeah. Hey, 
And when, what's the saying we got? What well, goes around comes around. <laughs> Do you realize that it's the same thing in the spiritual world? We just need to, to be able to hang on because there are benefits for the harvest time, but we've got to persevere. You know, the farmer has to persevere during all the other, from planting, from preparing the ground to planting and then taking care of the plants and then harvest time comes. He has to persevere through that. And that's not easy sometimes. In the spiritual, it's not easy because the enemy is going to do everything he can to delay your harvest. And you, in the natural, you get your harvest gets delayed and it, it's not what it should be because the weather doesn't cooperate properly. That's part of the enemy. See, we, if, you, if you're planting stuff, you need, to, you need to begin to, to command according to the word of God that my, my crop will grow. Yeah. I, that, that, that's part of it. See, we keep on believing and we keep on speaking until the promise comes. Yeah. See, you, got, you can't get tired. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we will reap if we don't lose heart message bible says so let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good at the right time we we will we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit some type of people sometimes people get weary they get tired you know I, i'm sure that Sometimes, some of those farmers that we never think about it when we go to the store and we buy, we get that produce, we get tomatoes, we get whatever, lettuce, we get whatever off that produce counter. We, we don't ever think about what has gone in to getting that to us. We need to... Once we plant our, our seed by saying whatever it is and believing God, then we praise. Psalm 67, 5. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. Our God, our own God, shall bless us. The voice Bible says it like this. May the people praise you with their whole hearts, O God. May every man, woman, child on the, on the earth praise you. The land has supplied a bountiful harvest and the true God, our God, has poured out his blessings to all of us. This, uh, you just have to take this scripture literally. Take it for what it says literally. What it says exactly is this. If you'll praise God, then the promises of God will come to pass in your life. See, sometimes we lose out in praising. See, some people will grumble when they don't see something happening. No, you got you to gotta keep praising. Don't praise God just for one day. Praise him till the harvest comes. I'm talking about getting out of your comfort zone and praising God like you never have before. Praise God in spite of what's happening. Praise God no matter how you feel. Praise God no matter how much time has passed. Praise God even when you don't see the harvest even coming. Praise God until you drowned out all doubt and reasoning. Just drown it with praise. How long do we praise? Until the harvest comes. Until the increase comes. Until payday comes. Yeah, but I don't feel like praising God. That's not, that doesn't make any difference. 
Praising God is something you do no matter how you feel. Trust you enjoyed the message. We have a tremendous offer that goes right, right along with what I was talking about in my message. In fact, it's my book, The Untapped Power of Praise. One of my favorite books. I've, this is six chapters, and there's 150 some odd pages, and it's not small print, but, it, I mean, it, but it's not real big print like some people do. And it's, there's a lot of material here. Yes. Now this book came out, uh, I was praying and the Lord began to talk to me about, he said, people are not missing it because they're not believing me and knowing how to believe God. Mm -hmm. He said, they're missing it because they don't know how to praise. That's right. And so that's where this teaching came from, the untapped power of praise. There is a power in praise yes. that's nowhere else. That's right. And then my dad has a four CD series called Ministering to the Lord. And somebody said, well, what in the world is that? Well, in this series, Dad, Kenneth E. Hagin, my dad, discusses the place and purpose of praise and worship in our everyday lives, just not, not just at church. See, some yes. people just think it's at church every mm -hmm. day. He explains that ministering to the Lord brings benefit and such as healing and joy, yes. and we can praise our way to victory. And that's the same thing I say in that's this right. book right here. That's right. So uh, these are normally thirty nine ninety five. And what are we doing? That's all right. We're offering them for twenty two dollars and twenty two cents. So that's a savings of seventeen dollars and seventy three cents. That's a good savings. Good savings. That's Go right, right now to your computer. And go to there to rhema.org and order those right That's now. That's right. Well, Living Faith Crusades are coming up. Oh, yeah. August 18th through the 20th, we are going to be in Seekonk, Massachusetts. That's just what, about 10? Yeah, not 10, too long from 10 now. 10 or 12 days yes. from this program. Faith Christian Center, Pastor John and Anita Pfeffer there. And then we're going on uh, August 21st through the 23rd to Schenectady, New York. Yeah. And uh, that is a, at Abounding Grace Christian Church with Pastor Jay and Pamela Stillinger. So you can go online and look for the times and the locations. Locations, find everything. That's Just right. go online to rhema.org and you can find out all that information. Right. Hey, we're still enrolling for... Uh, Rhema Bible Training College. That's right. Uh, just go online and you can apply right now. Right today you can yes. apply at rbtc.org. And, uh, you know, uh, this, this is a Bible school that we have. We have the, the, the two-year program, but we got the three- yes. and four-year program That's if you right. want it. And uh, we've got the where you can go the what they call the core curriculum or mm -hmm. now they've changed the name of it, I think. Yes. Anyway, I, and then uh, that's for two years. And then the third year you choose pastors, world missions, worship, student ministries, which is youth and children, helps, itinerant ministry. And now if you want to, you can just come and take two years of biblical studies. That's right. We have a lot of, we have a lot of more mature people. I don't say old, but <laughs> no, older people, no. <laughs> but the mature people that uh, they, they just wanted to come. Some of them are already retired. That's They're right. retired. Some of them, they sent their kids to Raymond and their kids are out ministering somewhere. Yes. But, uh, and so they just go and they take the biblical studies, which is two years of just Study Bible. of the Bible, That's study right. books of the Bible. So we got it all here. The RBTC is the best Bible school that you're going to find anywhere. I'll go. I'll I'll stack us up against anybody, That's anywhere, right. any day. And can you believe, honey? We're starting our 46th year yeah. of Rainbow Bible Training Yeah, college. we've been here for 46 years. We've got the track record to prove That's it. Right. <laughs> Amen. That's right. <laughs> and coming up in September, ladies, Kindle the Flame, September the 26th through the 28th. So make plans now to come, and we'll be telling you more about it in later broadcasts. If you want to 
find anything out about Kenneth Hagin Ministries, all you got to do is go to rhema.org. That's right. And you can watch video on demand. You can read our Word of Faith magazine. Yes. Or the daily devotionals or different articles. Uh, you can listen to Rhema today, our pod, radio podcast. Yes. Uh, you you or, can, if you find, you find out where we live streaming uh, our church services. Yes. And just all kinds of stuff there. Uh, we right. also have the Rama USA app that's available on I, iPod, iPhone, Android, We're and just Google everywhere. Play. We're everywhere. We're <laughs> everywhere. That's right. <laughs> so we, I'm just trying to give you a good idea. But if you want to know more about Rama, just go to rama.org and you find all everything that you need to know. Also, we have the online bookstore there. We also have a Roku channel. And uh, so we have, uh, what, over 54,000 people, I think, that uh, are subscri subscribers to yes. that. So praise yes. the Lord. So this giving you an idea of what's going on. And for all of you that are Word Partner Club members, you help us to be able to to do all the things that we do all over the world. What is a word partner, somebody asks? It's somebody that prays for us regularly yes. and sends an offering at least once a month or whatever they can afford to send. To, uh, you can find more about it if you go to rhema.org slash WPC. I want to thank all of our Word Partners that are out there that help us and all of you that are going to become Word Partner Club members because you help us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. There comes a midnight in our lives. You know what I mean by midnight, don't you? There comes a dark hour. There comes the test. There comes the trial. What are you going to do? Well, blessed be God, we've got an example from the Word of God what to do. At midnight, they prayed and sang praises. That's when the victory came. That's when the manifestation of what they were praying about came, when they were praising God. Ministering to the Lord, a four CD series by Kenneth E. Hagan discussing the place and purpose of praise and worship in our everyday lives, and the book, The Untapped Power in Praise by Kenneth W. Hagan. Overcome the trials of life and win the victory every time by praising God. The four CDs and the book can all be yours today for only $22.22. .22. So call toll free right now, 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, log on at rhemacanada.org. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.